All right, so today we're going to be discussing Guardians of the Galaxy. This is issue nine. And I've really loved, and Donnie, who is Donnie Cates, right, has done this, right? Yes. I've really enjoyed Guardians. To me, it hits home because of some of the characters that are part of it. Um, with We have Moon Dragon, right? We have Moon Dragon. We have Phyla Vale, who is Marvel's daughter. That's a part of this, this team, right? And I love the continuity aspect because... What this does, this story is more so, or more so like the, I guess the the whole Guardians run right now is coming off of like Infinity Wars, um, and Infinity with you know with Adam Warlock and you Gamora folding, ha getting a hold of all the in Infinity Gems and folding the universe in half and all of that stuff when when, when she got them and so many stories. I mean, came from that. When you think about the Infinity Watch with with Wolverine. Um, and, and Loki was sort of a part of that. It, it, it all of that leads into this, and we have with Thanos being killed off, and, and just so many different things that have popped off. But it all makes sense streamlining into this. So you have the OGs, um, or, or this version of the Guardians, not the back in the way way back version of the Guardians, but some of the people that you're gonna recognize in, in you know Groot. And in, in, in terms of the movie with, with Star Lord, Gamora, they're part of this. But what I love about issue nine and the end of it is that we see OG Drax the Destroyer. And by that I mean, and you may be thinking, well, what, what doesn't he appear? He's been appearing for, for some time. Uh, you know, when you think about. You know, those universes getting folded in half and you talk about him dying. That version of Drax was a weird version of Drax. It was not really Drax to destroy as far as I grew up um, knowing about right in, in the 90s and such. This Drax the Destroyer is. <laughs> it's the version that you see in the Guardians movie and it is part of the was Bautista that plays him. And part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe where he doesn't look anything like the Drax of old with the cape being able to fly. Look, this Drax the Destroyer is an important character. This is why I think that the version that's in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe is just I, I, I don't like that version considering how strong Drax the Destroyer is supposed to be. But also how important he is to Thanos' legacy. And we never got to see that explored because they're running with the current version of, of Drax. And Drax was solely created to destroy <laughs> Thanos to kill Thanos. That was the the whole reason why he was created by Thanos's uh, you know grandfather to solely kill um Thanos. That's the reason. That's the reason why he was created. And we don't really see that. We don't see that at all in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, and uh, considering like Moon Dragon is technically his daughter, not gonna go into too much detail with that, but. What we see at the end, and, and I don't want to give too much of the story away. I do think that this is one that you should absolutely pick up this run. It's only nine issues in, so you can get caught up pretty early or pretty easily. More so, we're dealing with this sort of cult following being led by Star-Lord's dad right now. And they're praising this guy, saying they're going to save the future. They've taken over the minds of some of the the Guardians and Moon Dragon, as well as uh, uh, Rocket Raccoon Groot, they're trying to save the others that were, that, you know, they had this sort of mind control thing going and trying to save them. And while they're on this little little ship led by Star Lord's dad, Star Lord himself um, uh, is sort of trying to fight back against all of this. And at the end of this issue, uh, he's like, right, this is who we're praising. This is who we have to have faith in. And out of this little cocoon thing comes Drex to destroy you, but not the Drex that we've been seeing in the previous years or the recent years. It's the, the, the green and purple looking Drex that I'm used to more. So I'm talking from top to bottom. That's the version of Drex that that it, that shows up at the end. And I'm interested to see what comes of this. But with me and why I think this is such a good idea to entertain uh, uh, idea. Yeah, more so to entertain. I don't know, again, if this is the real Drax, we, you know, how they're going to link all this together. We'll see. But when all else fails. 
we see the current issues with current Marvel runs and Marvel titles when it comes to some of these characters. Go back. See what was done right. And I feel like this is a sort of nod to that. We've seen this even in the 80 years of Marvel. We've gotten some we got some of these OG writers that have come aboard. And maybe that can serve as a, f- a refresher in the new mutants. Yeah, right here, actually. Chris Claremont actually write, writes this. And if you know Chris Claremont, he's done probably the most notable run of, of the X-Men in the what, going late 70s, going into the 80s. Um, But yeah, like, it's, it's not insulting. And I think maybe writers have this ego problem in which they feel like they have to do all of these, these new things to the point to where it erases the legacy of the character. And it, it's this rabbit hole. And the, the, the stories get way too far down the road. So they, it's hard for them to turn back because they feel like it's something offensive. And I could be wrong about this. Uh, but just knowing the ego of, of a lot of writers, I think this to be true. Because this doesn't just happen in comic books. Where what we're seeing is people that have an issue with running off of somebody else's work, which is why you get goofy versions or iterations of these characters. I don't know why they would see that as offensive. It's offensive to them to be like, all right, this character has a legacy that I shouldn't acknowledge. Now that doesn't mean you can't have a fresh new take on it, but there is some established sort of, you know, continuity that you should be acknowledging in your work. And a lot of that comes with the behavior of the character. And even even in some some aspects, the look. And I think going back more so to the look with Drax is maybe a way that they can say, look, we need to get back to the basics when it comes to some of these characters. We've we've gotten too far. A lot of these characters are nothing like they were when they were first created in terms of um, behavior or anything like that. And yes, there's been a couple of, you know, iterations of of Drax the Destroyer. He came back actually after the whole Thanos quest, more so after the Infinity War gauntlet. That version of Drax is, is pretty dumb because he was sort of reincarnated, right? Um, but it was still he still looked like Drax, though he was dumb. I would love for them to get back to the Drax that how why he would be existing. I, I don't know. They can maybe try to bridge that gap. But as far as him being very uh, uh, ruthless, b- very powerful and very determined that's the Drax that I would love to see getting back to that and maybe going back to his look is a way that they can do that so I have I advise you guys to check this out this is one of Marvel doesn't have a, a lot of good runs out right now you know I've said that time and time again but Guardians is certainly one of the good ones so most definitely pick that up um, catch the uh, you know issue nine again if you want to see Drax returning to his old look we'll see what happens with this this could just be them just you know hey yo we're having a nod to it but this ain't really Drax I don't know but I do think it's cool nonetheless this is a great run we've seen a lot of people pop up out of this from Thanos that was that have been important to Thanos's history even going back again to Infinity War and you know Infinity and all that stuff that happened with Gamora folding half of the universe with the Infinity jumps I'm talking Moon Dragon Falaville who else pops up I mean Eros right Thanos' his brother. Uh, so it's just so it's it's a, just a good book. It's just a good book. Check it out. I don't want to give too much of it um, away. So this is Guardians of the Galaxy issue nine that I just sort of went through. But the entire uh, run right now, this is Dunny Case run of Guardians of the Galaxy. I most definitely would check it out.